Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again. Oh, We're here for sweet. game number three, the final be all end all. Ehome facing off against Team Braveheart. Apologize again that we're a little bit late. I had to grab myself a snack. I didn't eat any dinner and I'm now four hours into casting for 14 hours. So I needed to make sure I keep my energy up. Uh, PQMZ, how you doing? We, we saw two games that were kind of stomped both ways. What do you think about the start of these two drafts here? Well, Ehome seemed like oh. fairly comfortable one-trick pony with their life stealer. Whereas Braveheart, they mix up a bit, bring the Sven in. I kind of like it. Cause it man fights for life stealer pretty well as the game goes on, and the armor helps out against Slada. Yeah. It's just going to be a case of if they let Radiant Ehome set the tempo, team. it could be a bit of a problem. Sven generally takes longer to get online. When you had mentioned earlier that you felt like they needed heroes that were capable of getting stuff done, that that was going to be the team that probably ended up coming away with the win. Um, what do you think they need to look for for heroes? Like, Kunkka can make that happen, but it feels Five like since the nerfs remaining. with Torrent, um, it, it doesn't really provide as much as it once did. What, what do you think about uh, they might want as another hero to run with them? Um, there's a lot of options, I think. Offlane is probably the best way to go about it, and you can apply some pressure there. The Slider is already taken. Uh, it's just really awkward. Axe, Ooh. Axe is a Dial good hero, though. Pick. Without the hero pool in front of me, like, listing off specifics, just, it doesn't come to me <laughs> for some reason. So I have to fill, like, with, they need this kind of role. Axe fits it pretty well. Yeah, and I'm with you, absolutely. I mean, there's... Hard to figure out exactly Ten what needs to happen, remaining. but you can see what these people are lacking in their drafts. It's, you know, like Five you said that earlier. I should just have the hero pool open on my second <laughs> monitor, and then I could give you better answers. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's do that. It doesn't matter. We don't need to do that. It's all good stuff here. But I, I feel like we've seen a lot of axes go straight for the Iron Talon juggle, and then afterwards pick up a Vanguard, and then start taking down the Ancients really rapidly. Uh, do you like that route for Axe this game, or do you kind of like sticking him in the lane against the Lifestealer? I think it depends on Ehome's second support, as well as uh, how much you want to be doing in the early stages. Because when you've got Sven, I don't think going Vanguard and farming Ancients is an option. You're going to want to leave that to him, because it's his big accelerant. Whereas Axe can do things around the map with just a blink. And as long as you have the boat buff on you, I imagine you can quite comfortably call any of the heroes from E-Home and get away with it. Yeah, it's true. And that's the combo that we've seen time and again is just a the tor torrent after a nice call and then you've got the boat that follows it. And then the plus side about that also is any of the heroes that happen to be tanky enough to deal with that combination, then they just get X'd back in and they have a second round of it. So really hard for... Uh, teams to deal with Axe Kunk and I feel like it's probably I would want to say the top two heroes that have been picked together um, with the exception of maybe something like a Drow Ranger and somebody but Eon Keen Radiant going back in time pick. taking out the DP themselves what do you think about that pick? I really like it this game they've got a lot of tower push enabled through it Roshan potential with the slider amazing scaling through fizz damage Oracle to save the hero I really like the theory remain. behind it. It's just going to be, if they have a good Five enough start remain. and she gets the items, it'll be fine. If they have a bad start, the hero could be a bit too squishy. Reserve. But, you know, I, I'm imagining that it, it'll work. I have faith. I love some Death Prophet. Oh, she's great. I mean, we've seen the Atos occasionally picked up as well. Um, it feels like that could be a pretty good answer against a lot of these melee heroes. And it's the way that Braveheart have been running their uh, lineups more often than not is just kind of run at you to the best of their abilities and I don't know do you think that this uh that's one of the routes that I mean how much work is she going to get done relative to these other heroes is that something that team Bravecart can itemize to deal with I think they just kind of they've got the war cry from Sven so they might not have to get armor too early but they're going to need tools to kite the lifestealer that's going to be the most important thing so four staffs on heroes like Axe, Kunker I don't think they can really go for a mid laner that, unless they want to go with something like Puck, which is a very, very bad matchup against DP for like the mid game, because you kind of have to have a Yules, otherwise the silence just causes you way too many problems. Razor. And now, TI4 era, it's a DP versus Razor mid, I would imagine. 
Um, tell me a little bit about this matchup. Has it changed at all since we saw it a ton way back when? Uh, DP's gotten a lot stronger with the addition of her third spell, so there's definitely more kill Ten potential her remaining. way. But I imagine it's still more of a who plays for lane better, who gets remaining. better support rotations, and maybe runes come into it. Otherwise, it'll just be a farm split, I think. No. Reserve time. The thing you do need to be careful about, obviously, for DP, you throw the soul sp or spirit siphon rather onto the razor that suddenly purges you and you're in a little bit of trouble. This is also a similar problem that you know, a hero like Oracle might run into. Uh, even Slardar for the amp damage, that's a pretty huge one. I think that Unstable Current does break, break the, the, the blink back. dagger of the Slardar as well. Yeah, it should be enough damage, so pretty rough for him. He has to go for that after you go in for the initiation with the crush. Yeah, you normally crush first anyway when Radiant you're initiating, team. unless you know for sure you can get the amp or run them down and Whoa. they're alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like that. That makes a lot of sense because they want like counter initiating here and they want something that brings a, a lot of team fight because e home are going to want to jump in, burst one hero, and then use the DP to continue the fight. Warlock's pretty good at stopping that. Seconds, Goes through rage and just helps all of his heroes stay alive. Seconds, he can get upheaval off as well, then suddenly running away is a real nightmare. I imagine Fatal Bonds is more the thing Reserve they go for, time. though. Upheaval's Ten just risky. Remaining. Yeah, it's tough to deal with, definitely. And, well, we do have Five the seconds final remaining. seconds ticking off now for Ehome Keen. What are they going to choose as their last pick? And it's going to be a Coddle. You know, I've been theorizing for a while how a Coddle might work with a couple of these heroes. One, you got the Slardar, so crush on a really low cooldown after you get that Chakra Magic cooldown reduction. And also DP. You start to look at how this is going to work in the way that uh, Crypt Swarm functions. Since Coddle now tops off your mana, if DP is at full mana, Coddle can just give her a little bit of extra and she gets a double Crypt Swarm, which is a pretty impressive amount of damage if you think about it. Uh, really hard to deal with. Yeah, I could definitely sway the early game. I'm kind of curious how they're going to build with the mana leak nerf. I imagine you still take a point in it when you're having the offlane contested. But um, this game, X could very well jungle from level 1, so you might just do the same thing. And I feel like the Coddle's either going to show its like true colors here and carry the game, or it's just going to be a liability, because... If you do farm it and you get the ags and you get the ability to push with the clear vision, etc., then you're in such a good spot. But if the hero just plays like as a five position recall mana bot, I don't think it's good enough for this game. Yeah, I mean, there are heroes that benefit a lot from it, but it's not the best thing in the world. And, um, it I mean, does recalling like... the infest hero is really strong. Yeah. So that's the one thing they've really got going for it. And it's also a hero that can farm the jungle if Axe isn't pressuring the lane, so they're not losing the economy war that way. Then Oracle can just swing by mid and start winning the matchup for the DP. So, it has all the grounds to work. Yeah, definitely. And we'll see if they can make it happen, indeed, as we oh, get wow. ready to finish this one off. The rotation inf was not able to bear a ton of fruit, but they did get this ward, which will not be taken out. It's also blocking the hard camped and on a several different sides so even if they manage to get one of the d wards they might not get the secondary one so kind of a neat little move there as well as placing a high ground ward for their mid player and this should end up working okay for them i imagine we'll, we'll see how this mid lane goes out i feel like that's going to be very telling for ehome i'm pretty sure this got sore from braveheart and ehome should have also seen this ward so i imagine two of them get d warded coddles already on the case now. Oh. Taking that one out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy for him and looks like they're gonna be able to get that one. Like it ain't no thing, so early warding war is working pretty well into their favor. Um another thing not didn't really think to mention was he can just go bottom as well and apply pressure here. It's one of the great things about Coddle. As long as your positioning's good, you can do so much damage to a safe lane, and you enable your Slider to get CS where he otherwise wouldn't be able to. Yeah. No. In fact, he's got an Iron Talon is slightly disynergistic, though, because if he had Stout Shield and, like, two Tangos and the Cell, he could contest the lane a lot more. Whereas now, it just kind of... It's not synergized as much as I would like. I really like also that... I mean, this is something that we did see previously uh, out of a Coddle pick that went and pressured the safe lane slightly. 
Um, you can afterwards go into the jungle and, you know, like you're saying, mess around with Dog7 some more. There's a good chance that they can find kills here if, you know, Dog7 is not uh, being on top of it too much. But Spirit Siphon going back the other way. No points in Unstable Current, obviously, for Piao. And they're just going to continue to trade off hits. But they need to come and contest that jungle of the Axe, I feel like. I'm not really sure. Like, the Cuddle was sitting behind mid. Then he runs between the towers, so they know where he is. And... Maybe he just doesn't feel comfortable being here because if X does kill Battle Hunger and Conquer comes over, they just run you down and you give a free kill. Not everyone uses a call when they're jungling, they occasionally hold the skill point. So maybe he's just too scared. He's not a good contesting hero, like his body is very fragile. You know. He almost snipes a razor mid though, he cancels the cells, so that's that was a great lead winning maneuver. Yeah, that is rough right now. On the way. I, the plus, oh no, it isn't. Even boots. No this is going to be rough indeed, and it yes. looks like now as well, you might even need to think about, you know, bringing out a, a TP pretty soon and have the X marks the spot play come out, because there's just not a great way for them to contest this, and Kato is looking over here like he wants to throw out a couple more bursts of this. The Hastern comes out, going to chase down the Courier, and that's easy peasy for him. Takes that one down and getting away with murder. Courier killed. Yeah, this Coddle's actually doing a lot, and he also, the Axe had to sell off the Razor, so he's not going to be happy about that. Axe is one greedy jungler, you don't want to give up your regen for no mid player. Yeah, no, for, definitely, and I, it was something where he felt like he had to get that there, but it's a, it's a hard game indeed. I'm liking what we've been seeing so far out of Ehome Keen. Um, likewise, that was, you know, them moving in towards the jungle for the slaughter, so he can just keep on stacking, uh, with the oracle. Gonna be able to go away with that one, and I imagine that slaughter here, after buying his TP, will probably deny himself to these creeps, so... Finishes that one off. All things going well. Efficiency on all lanes. Also stacking for the coddle, I imagine. Or DP. Uh, probably makes more sense for DP gets some. And you can leave the mid lane for the Coddle or the Oracle and you get some experience going both ways. Oh, Torrent connects now and blocked in by the Kunkka. Has to eat through the trees and that's the Fairy Fire pop out. Meanwhile, also Axe looking for the chase down. Do they find it? Oh, actually fakes the Torrent. Nicely done. Is fan of fake it again and well, keeps on thinking about where he wants to drop it. Hasn't thrown it as of yet. So I think that DP just gets away with that one. Yeah, Juke's back the other direction. Now she's safe. Mind games. Yeah, chances are you don't hit that though. Attacker might have hit it, but I think that's like one of the few people who, you know, you can tell the difference, right? Yeah. Between conquer players and, you know, people who play the hero literally all day, every day. Definitely. I, I There's only one the person that does that though. Yeah, I love the hero. It's something I thought was a lot better for a long Radiant's time and I kind of got proven top. right with it being brought back into the meta now so it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying it for a while. I, I, I'm gonna all, I mean none, none of us can really take credit for it obviously sadly but um, still good to be right about it. I remember playing against one of my buddies he was going Windranger and I went Kunkka mid with uh, just maxing out the Tidebringer and guess what evasion doesn't really matter all that much when you get your cleave damage out. It was Really great doing that one <laughs> But anyways, uh, tier 1 tower gonna fall in the top lane. So it looks like Ehome keen, just keen on getting that building damage done. And I mean, it does feel like this is gonna be a much better game for QD this time around on his life stealer. Yeah, for sure. He's got a vehicle, he's got people that allow roach potential and power pushing. So I like the fact they're doing building damage early, setting a tempo. Only small problem I think they're going to run into is DP's kind of level starved at the moment with the multiple heroes being mid, etc. So he's going to need some stacks to just, if anything, recover his experience. It's not like he's lacking in farm too much. Right. But the hero needs a lot of levels. Oh, and you can see that there are a couple of stacks over there in the jungle. The whole time through, though, QD is cutting a creep wave behind the tier 2 tower in the top lane, and nobody has come and contested him at all. It just feels like everybody wants they to can't. farm, and with the rotation in now, they might be able to do something, but I honestly don't know. He's still got rage TP if things really get hairy. Uh, I mean, you can't TP against the Axe, but you can just run away, and you can rage the Axe. That's the only thing you have to be worried about. 
The fact he was doing it without a TP is slightly ballsy, but I think he just has a good read on the game. No, no problem. No fuss, no muss. Arcane Rune up top. Imagine this just means it's going to be the Plasma Field spam. And a deep ward placed as well by the Dyer a little while ago. Just making that lifesteal all the more... Not afraid, I guess, is the best way to put it. And Oracle's kind of behind him here as well. Well, Torrent looking. I can be able to find it though. Dyer's structures are well, that is one way they can kill him when he's sitting like two thirds health. They need a lot of spins for that. Oh, one. goes for the TP out. Might still. I kind of wonder if they would have gone for another purifying flames there as well as the right clicks going the whole time from QD. They potentially could have found that kill. I think the torrent saved him because the flames was up for sure. Oh, now Sven taking some damage. Needs to be careful. They've got the fatal bonds on several of these heroes and Shadow Ward back off cooldown, but goes to the wrong direction and DP rotating in, finds the kill. Certainly in trouble right now is going to be that Warlock. He falls double for this DP and he said she needed levels. That's one of the ways to make it happen. Yeah, that's perfect rotation because you get the kills and then unfortunately they're a bit too low to sustain in the lane, but I imagine he still pops out to on his tower and dents it a bit. UD. If he doesn't, it's understandable, but I would like to see it happen. Because it, it just makes the rotation feel so much better when you can get tower off it as well. And you take a look at this as well. QD, I mean, he just keeps on bullying everybody out of this lane. There's been two separate teleports trying to escape away from just the solo pressure he's been applying. Armlet's going to be online soon, and that just makes him even more potent. I, I'm, I'm waiting to see how they try and address this. Like, Radiant what's the play right now if you're Braveheart? Do you need to move up there and send a bunch of heroes at him? Or what, what do you think? I think the play was to move the Razor there and have someone else go mid. It doesn't really matter who, because the Axe can go jungle, Conker can soak mid, etc. But now it's kind of at a point where do you really want to move your Razor if you didn't do it five minutes ago? Right. Like five minutes might be excessive because it's only eight minutes into the game. It feels Radiant's a bit longer, but you get the point. I, I feel like Ability. that was their only option. If they wanted to move a hero when he started skipping between the tier two, Razor's the only hero that can be up there comfortably. Sven wants to sit in his safe lane and farm, which is completely understandable. Well, unfortunately, he's not really not there the anymore. Best. He's kind of been forced to head out of there, and now he's going to go up top. I, I do wonder if he's just going to kind of face the same fate, though. God's strength is online, and the whole time through, you've got the... DP ready to start taking down this bottom tier 1 tower um, as Slardar scouts Radiant's out Dog 7. Is under attack. I don't think they can do anything here unless they bring in another hero. Looks like they might be doing it. Maybe he drops his tranquils. If they wait, then oh, like, no, he goes they're the going on him. They've got the Oracle in the area as well. There's the pure fine flames. Come back again. Another round of it if they can possibly find another crush. And I think this is going to be the kill. Dog 7 drops. And no great way to punish as they still do not have the control that they need. I, I feel like the triangle snipes for big play though. He was going to stack it. So maybe he doesn't farm it though for well of not wanting to get his uh, jungle contested. But it's still good play from them. They get the tier 1 bottom, they assert some dominance in the jungle. Next step is to get some wards in this area. I don't know how you stop that happening, by the way, What on the minimap when you draw on it. Oh, you yeah. should probably learn. Oh, that's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's perfect. It, it just stays there for too long. Like, I want to draw like a sweeping arc just to demonstrate the point, and then no one can see that area on the map for 10 seconds. Right, definitely. And Life Stealer is dead. Huh? Uh, no, maybe not. I don't know why he's trying to contest a double ancient stack. This is not efficient for him at all. And if you do, at he least gets a region, like, right? hop into a you know, one of the ancient creeps or something after the fact. But regardless, you can't do that anymore. Oh right, it's, it's you can't do it at level first. one. It's level two now. Forgot about that. Balance. <laughs> Balance in all things. Well, it's uh, now uh, around the 10 minute mark, laning stage starting to break down slightly. We do have DP as well as the Oracle and the nice little Keeper of the Light in the area, all ready to try and help out their buddies and think about taking this tier one tower. He is ready to go and uh, they don't have the Blink Dagger on Slarder. Is that something they need to be worried about or can they still fight around this? I think they can definitely still fight. The Blink's kind of icing on the cake this game because they've got so many ways of enabling oh my God. their engagement. Oh, QD, huge plays! 
What? Okay, hold on. If you come out of a life stealer ancient or a life stealer mud golem, you get to control the two mud golems as well. I did not yeah. know that was a thing. And you learn something new every day in the game of Dota 2. That's awesome. That's a huge amount of damage potential. Yeah, it's pretty busted. Radiance middle tower has kind of fallen. gets warranted for being a subpar hero in a lot of cases. Yeah, definitely. My goodness. Well, great start. They take down the tier one tower in the mid lane as well. Ehome Keen just all over it at this point, and they're feeling like they're going to be able to keep on building on this advantage. There's no reason they shouldn't be able to. The only thing I think that they could prioritize a bit more is when the Coddle was taking the jungle if the Slider rotated and sniped the gold for the blink. I think that's the only thing they could realistically be amplifying anymore. But the Coddle's saying, no, I want my eggs. I am the game winning hero here. <laughs> you know, he's doing the double stacks. So unfortunately, one camp's too big. First what problems. I mean, this is still, uh, it's a little bit crazy. I mean, this isn't actually even efficient. This is it. triggering me. Well, you, you can do this. <laughs> this is triggering me. It really is. Well, you just look away. Don't, don't, don't stare at it. It'll be okay. I promise. I mean, you just, you drop your tranquils and you hit both camps. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Mid lane, they do spot out that the uh, smoke ink rotation is going to come in. Wait. QD gets caught out for the moment, but there's the Oracle save. Turn it back around. None of the damage is going through. He's still in a lot of trouble, though. Hops inside of one of the creeps and is going to be able to walk away. Actually lives through all of that. The Fates Edict doing work in conjunction with all of the heals thrown in him from the Oracle. So nicely played. And, and at the end of the day, they're even bringing the Razor fairly low. Yeah, the infest heal on top of false promise is pretty much your health pool, so... I'm kind of surprised they let them jump there. Maybe they didn't know the axe had blink, because they definitely knew it was happening. Their scan hit, bang on the money. But it still ends up being really good for them, and I think they're in a position now where as soon as this exorcism ticks down, they get Roche, which is exactly what they're doing. Which is really smart. The only big team fight thing they have to worry about is Golem, which is on the ground for two minutes. Um, they don't even have the perks, this isn't here, they feel really comfortable. Yeah. So they can use it on a tower instead, which is even better. It's, it's going to be it... and everything at once. The only thing they're missing is maybe Lysealer to get Deso before they go the tier twos. I wouldn't say it's a bad idea to wait for it, but at the same time, you don't have to wait for it. You can just make space for this Coddle now. And if you take one tier two, I think he'll have the Ags by the time it hits daytime, but you, unfortunately you won't have Aegis at that point. That's a, one downside to this timing when you get it fairly early, it's generally nighttime. Oh, so close down there in the bottom lane. The Slardar was looking for the crush, but wasn't quite able to catch it. And now, uh, looking at this situation, I mean, yeah, it, that's the definitely the, the downside to it. He's getting closer. Um, but I, I think even if they don't end up pushing with this next stage, it's probably still okay. Like, as long as they're not losing heroes and they're taking trades across the map, they can think about the next, you know, big Roshan for their, uh, their next high ground push. Uh, it's, it would probably be fine just for them to sort of secure these other tier two towers with it. Yeah, so that's okay. exactly what I meant. I didn't mean high ground with the pushing. High yeah. grounds. Uh, I think you definitely want Coddle Axe when you go high ground and you want daytime and you want level two exorcism oh, okay. and... I mean, they definitely could, like, chip the high ground, but taking it's just more of a maneuver to force Braveheart back so that they can then take control of the rest of the map that they just abandoned. Yeah, this is just another really grim game for them, because for Coddle's basically a full core at this stage, having a 15 minute axe is pretty absurd. Now, he really has you know, just like, been falling up the storm. One minute till daytime, so they're gonna have Aegis and they could actually feasibly go high ground. Unfortunately, DP Dalt is level one, so it does like minimal damage, but they have a Death of Life Stealer, so he can be the one that chunks the tower. Plus side right now that you've also got on the side of Ehome Keen is that oh, Braveheart, they they've got the blink in from the axe that can come out, and he does have obviously the bonus damage they'll get from all the call and stuff, but He's not the tankiest guy in the world, only 1100 HP, so the spins, if they can burst him down in time, it might not be the biggest deal in the world. I've, I've already taken the yeah, tier. He's so tower. Fragile. 
So all the heroes are fragile at this point. Even with war crime boat buff, I'm pretty sure he home chew through them. It might take a lot longer, but I still think they can connect them. Oh, like if you look at this here's event, the play jumping forward. They've got it. A second crush is gonna come out. Oh god, it's dirty. You gotta love that coddle cooldown reduction. So strong and the uh, Sven just destroyed. It's not always what you pick the hero for, but when you can fit it into your lineup in a way that works like that, it's just another nice niche. They're all full up again, too. Coddle Ag's yep. pretty good. Mobile Fountain. And they have an Oracle on top of this, so if any hero isn't at 100% health, they're doing something wrong. Well, nicely done here. They're going to be healed up to all wazoo, and you know, you got Piao as well as the Warlock heading up this direction to try and push down that tier 2 tower, but by the same token, with the Aegis still up and online and only a little while away from having the Exorcism off cooldown, it feels like Elom are pretty comfortable pushing this. Gotta be careful, but man, it's, it's not easy. You're, uh, you're a Braveheart buddy right now. No, that deep push is pretty much consistent of Razor, and that's it. Torrin is level 1, the Tidebringer is an auto attack. So yeah, if he home do actually get to a structure, I see them being able to take it unless they dive too deep and they get punished by a golem and like a two three man call into boat. But this kind of smoke is one of their better ways of getting into the game. Fortunately, I think he home know what's up because they have such deep vision right now that if they don't see heroes in this area, it's kind of easy to tell they're doing something. We just need to back off or we need to group up towards our Aegis. Because they've also got gem on the coddle now, so they can take complete map control. Yeah, this is a rough one indeed. And the crazy thing about it is you take a look at the net worth. It's 12, 14,000 into their favor. This was a bigger lead right now for Ehome than Braveheart had in the last game when it was 3 to 22. Like, it's crazy the amount of just efficiency that I feel like Ehome has been able to to gain as far as their farming efficiency throughout this game and now not going to be able to catch anybody heading back over this direction as it looks like everybody from the side of Braveheart will escape but they do need to be careful because again at any point in time I feel like Elon could just move up to high ground with everything up and online for them. Yeah I don't think they're quite going to get the chance to do it with this HSO because it's expiring in a minute, daytime's going to tick out in like one and a half so probably just want to wait for like Next round of items where DP maybe goes Octrain, maybe goes Heart. Oh, I was wondering. They're they're still looking here, and they do have a another little chakra magic to throw onto the onto the slider if they want to go for it. But waiting for their moment could be soon. No, they're not going to go for it. They're they're slowing down. No, they don't need to do anything risky. They have complete control of the game. And that all comes from having Coddle now. Uh, kind of what I said earlier, where the hero is either going to, you know, completely carry the game, which, to be fair, it hasn't had to do too much, but at this stage, you just can't play against it. You're playing into True Vision, you're playing into a hero that could always bring one other hero to the fight. With Lifestealer, you've got the luxury of making that too. So you, it's very risky to go for smoke engagements, it's very risky to step out on the map in general, and you can see what they're resorting to, you know, Xing the Sven in base so he can clear one creep wave. Oh, and, and the other four coming. heroes are sat there, you know, that, that's how depressing their game is right now. Uh, I thought he was going to be able to get that D ward, but just right out of vision, it's not going to matter, it's going to expire relatively shortly, so the limited vision of Braveheart becoming a bigger and bigger deal that's starting to look like they're just gonna have to Radiant sack the tier two tower, no problem there. But with nighttime, that might dissuade Ehome Freak Keen from trying to push any further, at least for now. They'll take things a little yeah, bit. I agree with that. Just Radiant's wait for Roshan and wait for your attack. items. It sounds really boring, but when you have control of the game like this, Radiant's it's on the opposing team to Ooh. disrupt you. Well, Smoke Ink actually Radiant's coming out. They might be able to find attack. something here. God Strength available. They can just jump immediately if they want to. There's the call. Going to be able to get the start off for this one, and they get the Oracle ulti off. Oh my god, a big crush, but the counter initiate comes out from the Warlock as well, trying to bring them low, and it looks like they are going to be able to throw out the boat damage as well. Lift it up, Yule Scepter. Oh my god. And regenning back up all the way to full almost is going to finally fall. That wouldn't have been a kill if it was daytime as they did have that coddle blast come back out and piao still taking damage they're gonna pop
pull back in the Slardar. Shadow Blade not going to keep him alive. He ends up falling. QD, though, going ham. He is going to finally fall, but they take down three for him. And that's about the best time you could ask to take a fight. Um, it still goes mediocre for them. They trade evenly. Obviously, it favors them quite heavily in the terms of like getting 3k gold. But it doesn't change how the game's going to run, unfortunately. They need that to happen multiple times. That's definitely a problem. Behind. And I feel like the biggest reason that fight went well was Razor got 130 damage from the Life Stealer and forced him to run the entire time. So they could always be the aggressors. Yeah. That was like the biggest thing that fight. And, I mean, we're seeing like little bits and pieces. We've got, you know, items that are starting to come up. Kunkka is building towards his armlet, and there, there's ways in which they can take fights that are effective. Um, so in your eyes then for Braveheart, is it is it about like trying to also make some more ganks happen during the nighttime as well? Because it feels like if Ehome are allowed to set up and just sort of slowly siege down the towers, there's just no way for them to win, right? Yeah, I think their best hopes are overextension and if they can, smoke ganks. But smoke ganks are a very limited resource, so completely out at the moment, one restocks in 30, unless one is on one of the heroes, which doesn't look like it is. So they're going to have one smoke gank for 12 minutes. It can't be soon, because... Roche is like a contention at this point, so Ehome are going to naturally be quite clustered. They don't want to go into a five-man engagement like that, too, like outside of their base. They had the luxury of it being very structured by their tier two. If they get into a fight like in the river here, it's just going to be too chaotic, and I think Ehome will quite happily take that. Uh -huh. And then they're going to have to worry about it daytime hitting, so they can't smoke into that because clear vision is kind of king. I don't know, this is a situation where I feel like the drafts just not quite come together for them and again, it doesn't look like they know what to do either, they're just Dyer's kind of cobbling together whatever attack. amount of farm they can, trying to push out lanes where they feel it's safe. Ooh. They've left their Sven up in the top lane, he's gonna blink Dyer's back and they ping out where they think he might be and they can possibly get lucky looking for TP. No, not going to be able to get it. I was wondering if they'd try and go for the dive, but no such luck. There was a moment there where it was a possibility. Yeah, and if they can rinse and repeat that and just draw out Ehome's timings, they have a hope in hell. <laughs> this kind of smoke, though, it's risky because it's about to hit daytime. Yeah. I don't think they're keyed onto that at all because smoking into daytime, as I said, is risky. They are split now, though. Braveheart should have a rough idea of that. It's just they haven't scanned anything yet. They've got no vision on the map, so they're going into this quite timid. And now they'll see it hits daytime. Oh, Actually, jump really forward and catch on the call for two, though, and just evaporate it. Look at the combination. They're able to find it. So even though it's daytime, this is going to allow them to at least think about making a move into Roshan. They no, no, do they have not to. have buyback on Slardar currently, so I don't think Ehome King can come and contest this, at least for now. I think they can slow it down, but contesting it, I don't feel necessary. Because if they lose this fight, then they just give up such a huge lead. All right. They, oh my I mean, god! That's light. What? Dang. What? <laughs> get on the has a bling. Yeah, They're going to be able to get out of there, at least for now. Meanwhile, QD that's jumps silence. in. They bring down the Aegis. There's going to be the Sven picking it up, and it looks like they actually want to try and take this fight. Nice torrent to create that separation, and that might be enough to keep Razor alive. Meanwhile, the X marks the spot is going to allow the DP to at least force out the Yule Crazy. Scepter, and this should be a kill as the Mana Leak comes out, and... QD is going to be able to chase. Nicely played that way and still up on the cliff. Poor Kunkka. Nowhere to go. He does get punished. You let your God I slightly overestimated how quickly they could kill it. I didn't think Ehome would have as much time as they did. But they still had to go for that. That was like the closest oh, thing no. they're going to get to a good initiation. And now with three heroes gone, it's starting to feel like Ehome Keen are going to be able to take down the tier 3 tower mid they they it might be a bit of a rough one for them to go for a, a secondary one afterwards but I mean they, they can it's just slow they just have to make sure that it's only life stealer getting initiated on they've got the oracle to save him and they just need to time the initiations when Jet illuminates Ford? down 
Counter initiation. They get the silence off as well as an amp damage on the Sven, so they're gonna force them back for the moment. And you know, it doesn't look like they want to try and pressure too much further. Somebody just heads back home. I think they're just gonna farm this jungle out and then maybe go with exorcism again. That that would make sense. Just wait for your exorcism to come off and then maybe Braveheart misstep in the time that you're waiting for it. Well, this is the weird part, though, idea. though, also, is that, it, like, Ehome Keen were not trying to make a play happen when Aegis was used, and now it looks like they're going to go for another counter initiation. They do find Razor alone outside of the base, countering now with the axe. Blade Veil has popped out as well. Oh, but they're not going to be able to get on top of him. Another huge blinding light play. BKB not available now, so Sven not going to be able to hit anybody. There's another counter initiation turning on to the Sven. Exorcism damage is doing work, and he's in a hell of a lot of trouble. Aegis is now down. Still a decent duration left on this exorcism, and he might end up paying for it. The jump forward now as well. Coming from the slaughter with the counter initiation oh. with the rock drop and the axe call. Holy hell, it's going to be a lot of damage. And I actually might be able to turn this back around. QD trying his very best at and he's is alive. able to kill off one. But they still do have this DP very survivable over here to the side. And silence now onto the razor. That is going to be enough to heal her back up after the exorcism finishes. Pie back from the axe. The team fight that never ends. And the luxury of call off. No. Like, the fact they were able to get those kills through, like, False Promise and the Illuminate heal shows they can actually do damage when it connects. Oh. It's just, it's so hard to set it up. Well, and the boat gonna drop, but the Fates Edict again. Great play by this Oracle. Oracle has literally just been spamming spells this whole time, and nobody has messed with them at all. <laughs> uh, they can't. Like, the only way they can is if they did like a loop around like this, where you can't do that because you're against Coddle, and they're going to see the loop around. Oh. And you have three cores that are just going to sit on this line, and they aren't going past you. Oh my goodness. You know, only has like the range of a Blink Dagger, so you can't even have like a thousand range initiation onto the back lines while, I don't know, some miracle Freeman Torrent boat hits your front line. We also now have the situation where Exorcism is about to be back off cooldown. They yeah, recall the well. Life Stealer and Slardar are ready to jump in and make things happen. Have another Chakra Magic in eight seconds. If they can hit a big double crush, this would be a huge problem for them. But again, Fate's Edict and Exorcism from the low grounds. They just need to siege. They don't even need to initiate. It's more of a counter initiation than anything. If DP doesn't get stopped for their they moment. Crack. They get the call, but Fate's Edict means that they're not going to be able to attack, and there's the jump forward. My god, that's a lot of damage, but also going to lose the Sardar for it. I don't think it matters, though. Sven is gone. They even Fate's Edict him, so he can't attack, and this is going to be Barracks going down rather rapidly. Kunkka doing his bestest. But now, now damage onto Dog7. They end up being able to heal the Slardar, so still alive for the moment. Crush turnaround also going to be there, and that's going to be a very, very dead axe. They lose the Slardar for it, but I think it's more than enough. Dominating streak, and GG gets called. Ehome Keen all over him. Yeah, they look really good with this life stealer when they actually have the tools to use the hero, which they didn't really get in the second game. And at the end of the day, that's just... I feel like they played better. They had more options with their draft as well. But the Coddle just did so much as well in the Seizures. Another thing that I didn't realize was so good was like the Blinding Light buff. It's such a huge pushback now. If you don't have BKB, the, obviously the blind's going to mess you up, but just the pushback was insane. I didn't realize it was that big a buff. Yeah, it, it really did make a huge difference. I mean, is that something that you feel like we're going to be seeing going forward now as more teams have been picking Coddle already? I think Coddle's a very busted hero in terms of it breaks how the game works because you can move heroes around where you otherwise couldn't. So the hero is always going to be pickable. It's just if you can warrant the laning stage, which people have learned to dual offlane with him, apply some pressure with the Illuminate spam, and I think it's definitely a hero we'll see a lot. It's just more team specific than anything, I feel like. Yeah. Well, thank you again so much for joining me, PQMZ. Of course, everybody go follow him on Twitter. We'll uh, send out a couple of links into the chat, but uh, at PQMZ Dota underscore, I'm Lyrical Dota at Lyrical Dota. You can follow us both on Twitter if you feel so inclined, but be sure to keep on following Shanghai Dota 2 Open, number two, presented by BTS. 
We're going to be back in just a little bit. We've got one final game of the evening. It's CDEC facing off against Newbie. So be sure to stick around, everybody. And any final words before we sign off? Anything else that we could, any other places?